Well, hello friends, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel here. I'm gonna show you an inside outside card. I love little things like this that have a surprise on the inside. And this Make My Tail Wag set from MFT is so dang cute and totally lends itself to that. This is the inside of the card. We're gonna color this image first with Copic markers, and then we'll color the outside one. I'll show you the rest. I got out my hex chart because I wanna play with a bunch of different browns and I want this portion of the dog to be the E39 and E97 and I picked out an E18 to go with it for the shadows. And what I like to do is pull out that hex chart. If you haven't seen it before, go to my blog. There's also a link in the doobly-doo and you can pick one up for yourself and color it in and it really has transformed for a lot of people how they color. And if you have a testimony of how it's helped you color, then leave that in the description down below because I'm sure other people who are on the fence about it would like to know if it's actually helpful to you. And I am finding I'm learning a whole lot from it as well because this is not necessarily a combination I might have tried for a dog like this. But there are so many dogs on this card, I wanted each one to feel very different. So that's what I am working on. So this one is, he's our focal dog. He's like the most important one since his butt is here and his face is on the other side. And the lighting is going to come from that upper right hand side. And I'm just going to add lots of deep shadows along that left side. And I'm blending it out with the lightest color again. I always start with my lightest, go to my darkest, my medium, and then start blending with the light color again. I decided I wanted to add some fur to him. So I'm using the E39, which is the mid middle color of the three, and I'm gonna keep making these little furry hash marks until I get to the point where they blend in, you can't see them anymore. And then I'm gonna go for the darker color, and I'm gonna grab that one and start making a little bit more hash marks and go up into the area above it, and then that little outside. I, I kind of left a little highlight area on the outside of the image because that allows for bounced light. I do that a lot lately, it seems. That's my thing. And then I started working on the other color for him and I decided I would go for warm grays. And I'm doing the same thing with that. I'm just gonna make some little hash marks for the shadows on him. And you can't forget his little butt down below. Uh, that's going to be the same color. That would be the color that would go around his tummy, too, if you saw the front of him. On the other stamp, you only see his head. But now I've got his ears colored in, and I decided I wanted to go for house colors, and I didn't want to go into that kind of grayish color, so I'm going down here to these sorts of browns, more traditional browns, and trying to figure out which ones of the browns are going to work to make the the house look different. I'm going to do shingles on the outside of the house and I want to make it look different than him. There's a lot of times where I try to pull the same colors all around the image and I do that a little bit in some areas when I pull some colors around to the different dogs but in this particular case I wanted the wood to look like a very different brown than my dog. So I'm adding my really darkest shadow right underneath the roof ledge. That's going to be one of the deepest darkest shadows and underneath of that sign on the front of his little doggy house. And then I'm going to put some shadows underneath each one of those, those shingles, those little lines there. Blend them out with a mid-tone color and make that a little bit softer and do that across the entire house. And then I'm going to blend the whole thing with the lightest color again. Just going over that again with the, the E35 color. And then I decided I wanted to add the shingles. So I'm just doing little uneven hash marks. And you can see that kind of adds, it almost looks like there's a little kick to the ends of each one of those little, little pieces. So it looks like a shaggy shingled doghouse. I'm using toner grays for the inside of the doghouse, but you can use any grays. And um, the lightest part on this would be near the door because that's where the light would come in from the sky. So the darkest part would be at the top. You might think that would be different otherwise, but no, it's not. So I decided to use just a simple gray on the, the roof ledge and a really simple color here on the brown uh, little, little doggy bone sign. His bed, since he's a boy dog, I, I'm not sure why he's a boy dog. He, I suppose could be a girl dog, but I decided it was a boy dog. And he's going to have a two-tone blue bed. And I did go a little bit to my hex chart for it just to find two different blues, 
but the colors that I mixed with them, I wasn't really happy with what I was seeing there, so I just kind of winged it. This is a B26 that goes with the B21, and there's going to be a B24 in between, and that's a natural blending group. I still go by the numbers, even though I have the hex chart, I still go by the numbers on a pretty regular basis because you can see how nicely those go together. The B18 is being used here because there is no dark dark in the B0s. I wish there was like a B09, it would be really nice. So I jumped over one number and started using a little bit of that and then I'm just going over it with the B05 again. And that's going to keep a little bit of the shading underneath. I could have used a gray to add a lot more depth to it, but it's not a super important part of the picture, so I didn't worry about it. I'm also only using two little reds here on my little doggy bowl because the emphasis is not on those. Now the fence, I wanted to go for something that was gonna look a little bit like birch. And I went for this E81. I don't use this color very often. There's a bunch of colors I don't use very often. And the hex chart helps me to figure out exactly what shades I want to use. You can see this is a, a brown that has a little bit of a green tinge to it. And I'm going to make it a birch fence by adding some pencil lines to it. This is my crazy ruler that I got when I was sailing. And it has wheels on it so it stays straight and even across the card. I'm not making my boards spaced equally and you'll see it won't really matter at all. But I'm just gonna draw some lines and I am going over it with my marker. Generally you don't want to go over pencil lines too much with your Copic markers. It can ruin the nibs and you know discolor them and that sort of thing. And I haven't had a huge experience doing that um, I've just heard lots of other people have had that issue, but what I'm finding is if I use it gently and I don't go really heavy with the pencil, I can kind of get away with that. Especially here, I'm using a gray, and the gray marker is covering gray pencil, so it's not really going to hurt it at all. So I'm adding some extra shadows underneath the dog where he's standing and back behind the dog house and blending those out, and then I'm going to add texture to the wood. And here is where the fun and the magic begins because just some squiggly lines. They're uneven and sometimes I almost make them look like the, the lines are going around a little knot in the wood. If you pull up some pieces of wood on Google or something, you can find all kinds of very cool textures to make all different kinds of wood. And you can see what the grains look like and if there's other colors that you can bring into them to make it look like the kind of fence that you want to make it. For the ground, I decided to go for some of the E3s, and I'm just using the E3 Natural Blending Group for this. So E3-4, I'm going to jump down to an E3-1, and then to an E3-0, and just keep going down. I'm adding a lot of color to this, and I'm just scribbling. I'm not really, I'm just doing vertical scribbles. And one of the things that this is doing, which we normally don't necessarily like, is adding a lot of that modeled texture to it. I'm just adding ton of ink to it and that is going to add it enough color that it's going to make it look like dirt too. So there's sometimes when you can make the marker do things that are going to actually help you. And here I'm just going to add some super deep dark shadows under the objects that are in the picture and then blend them out really softly with that E34 color again. You can see how quickly it blends out when the paper is this saturated and this wet. Now it's time to move over for side two of this card. This is actually the front of it and I've got three dogs on there and they are just ignoring the fact that our little star doggy wants his stick. So sad! This poor little guy wants his stick. He's going to be in the same colors that he was on the other side and I have the colored piece off the screen here so that I can make sure that I get the left right side on his spots correct and that sort of thing. In order to stamp it this way, I used my Misty. I'll link to that in the doobly-doo down below. The Misty is a stamping tool that allows you to do some cool things, one of which I didn't film in this one. I stamped my image on a piece of tracing paper. That way I was able to flip it and line up the dog on the other side so that the head of the dog lines up on both sides of the pieces of paper. hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, then maybe I'll find another image I can do this with and show you that lining up technique later. But it worked really cool for this and I was really pleased with how it came out because it allowed me to do this card the way it was in my head. So we're on to the next doggy and I wanted different kinds of colors but I wanted him to feel like a white dog so I went for some of the E4s. 
The E4s are a little weird of a brown family in that the lightest E4, this E4-0, is nice and light. The E4-3 is a little bit, you know, considerably darker. But then when you get to the E4-2 in the middle, you're going to see it does a little different thing. The color in it is a little bit more on the yellowy side. So look at what you've got here now, and it's almost more peachy than the existing colors and it's sandwiched in between them. You wouldn't think that it would do that, but there you go. It's just a, a weird anomaly with the way the markers work. And the hex chart really helps so you can see those things and see the differences in between each one of the shades of color. This little doggy, I wanted to make him a black and white dog. And I did start with a relatively light gray, this T4. Lots of people start with much lighter grays and then they end up with an object that looks gray. I'm going to color, cover up as I color most of the T4 there because I want him to really look like he's black and white. And I want a little bit of highlight in the grays, but not a ton. So if your grays, your black areas are feeling more like they're grays, then definitely try to, try to bump up the numbers on the colors a little bit. So I even decided to add a little C3 to him, to his black areas instead of that T4 to kind of change the color a little bit as well. And now I'm using the C markers on his little nose and his little underneath his legs, that sort of thing, because I wanted his white to feel different than the, the white dog next to him and the not so white, I mean, I guess our, our other doggy, our star doggy is a little on the dirty side, dirty white. Now for the last dog, I wanted to go for a more traditional brown, so I went for the E1s. E13, 15, and 18, which is a natural blending group. Again, when they have the, the first digit being the same, that makes them a natural group because they're in that family. So they'll blend really well uh, for the most part. And I'm going to add my shadows next. And I used to, way back in the day, if you watch any of my really early videos, I used to color my darks first and then go to my mediums and my lights. And it worked. I mean, my coloring was certainly fine. So if that is the way that you color, you're certainly welcome to do that. This is just what I found works better because once the paper is really saturated with that light color, the other colors just blend easier and faster. And so that's why I made the switch when I started realizing that that made a huge difference. So here's our little brown doggy coming together. And I like that all these dogs feel like they're very individual dogs. They're all very different. They have different tones to their brownness, and I really like that about having a, an image with multiple animals in it and trying to make them all feel like they're very different. However, they all have the same nose colors, and I didn't do any pink noses. So I took my darkest marker and I made some little whiskers for him because he had this big open space that seemed to cry out for it, and then our little white doggy, he wanted whiskers too, so I got him some. And now for the stick, our poor little dog who lost his stick, nobody will help him. I'm making the stick the same colors as him, so I wanted to tie that to him visually that way. It's one of those subtleties no one else will notice, but I know it's there. I'm going to do the same thing with the fence, so I'm not going to repeat showing you every detail of it because you saw the fence on the other side, but using that same ruler, making the lines and creating the texture on that bark and adding shadows underneath of him because he's hanging over the fence, so there's gonna be a shadow under him. And then just lots of lines all over the entire thing for that beautiful wood texture. And I'll use the same dirt colors on this side and the same pattern of scribbling as I did on the other side. I'm even going right over that stick so I don't have to color around it. And that made it a whole lot easier to do the coloring. I'm not a big fan of coloring around a whole lot of little noodly areas if I don't have to. So I'm adding some shadows, the deepest, darkest ones under some of our pooches, and spreading that out and making that all looking beautiful. And now we get to start assembling this fun card. So I started by trimming out the front. I trimmed out the dogs and the fence and just that whole section across the top there. And I did it only on one side for a particular reason, because as I was doing this, I realized, see this little dog with his little nose sticking up? What's, what's going to happen on the other side of the card? I'm going to see just a little point of his nose, and that's not going to work very well. So his 
this dog is going to line up, but he's going to just stick out. Now there's also that little point on the doghouse that I should have taken into account over here, but it's just going to have to be the way it is. In order to make sure I'm lining everything upright, I'm first going to trim out our hero dog. That's the focal point of this card. And I'm going to trim him out with my little fussy cutting scissors and get that done first so I can line it up on the back of the other piece and get that all, it's, I'm just temporarily sticking it together with a little bit of a tape runner in between. And I'm gonna trim around that little doggy so I can draw his nose onto the other side. So when you're looking at the card from the inside, there's a little nose sticking out. And it does chop off the top of the little doghouse, but you know it is what it is, right? I've made a mark where that fence line is. So I wanna cut off the part that's above the fence line. That may not make sense at this very moment, but as soon as I put it together, it's gonna hopefully become clear. So now I've got lots of tape runner along here and the fence goes beyond that place where I cut it off on this card front, that the, the one that I just chopped off with my tonic trimmer. And then I line up the other piece on the other side. And now that part's all done. I'm gonna put a little corner rounding on the back panel. And I decided I also needed some sky in the back panel because now the inside was all empty. So I took my Copic airbrush and tossed a little color onto that, just some really light. I used the same B05 marker that I used on the little doggy bed and uh, just airbrushed some color on there to make a little happy sky. And you can see here now how this is going to function. This is going to close so you see the sky. And I'm going to add a few little things to it that you'll see in just a moment. I punched out some clouds and a little sun so that there's a little scene behind the doggies' heads. Oh my gosh, this card came out even better than it did in my imagination. And I thought, sorry you're having a rough day. It would be really cute because our little guy lost his stick. He's having a rough day. Poor pooch. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it was long, but here are some more videos if you have more time to waste. And I will see you guys again next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.